If you've been following my channel Sariska Pace, then you'll know that I've been mostly working on this spot and on the fence. This is a Patreon shrine. This is a display area for the plants picked by my Patreon sponsors. These are these five on top of the pedestals. But this is not going to be a strictly Patreon thing. I'm going to involve the community in working these bowls. Each bowl would be designed with the help of the community. I'll be gathering your input on which plants I could use. But that would be happening much later. I still have to gather the plants, the plant materials that I could use. And that will take some time. Until we get to that point, let's talk about something else. This video is about my garden review for June. And in this tour, I'm going to walk you through the state of the garden. While working on my garden, I made quite a mess. I've been leaving things around, especially since it's been raining constantly over the past couple of weeks. I think one of these days, maybe after I finish the Patreon Shrine, I would need to do a major cleanup. And I'm not just talking about the stuff on the ground. I would also need to go through each and every plant that I have planted in the ground and clean up their skirts. Because fungal rot is a very real thing during winter, especially now that it's raining so much. Apart from cleaning the undersides of the plants, I'll also need to do something about the lawn because the grass is just overgrown right now and thanks to the rain <laughs> it's come back to life then there's also the matter of all of these plants this is my sun hardening spot I currently have all of them here just so they get enough sunlight because I'm preparing them for the next summer but admittedly this is not the best spot for them because this is blocking the way to the playground there's always going to be a risk that my son would be would trip over them so I need to move them someplace else and I was thinking maybe this spot would be better I've been meaning to remove these plants here for quite a while now so, so maybe I should be working on that pretty soon this is funny that's my Crashula vata or the jade and the aeoniums over here they are starting to bloom at the same time I was planning of moving this spot somewhere out Maybe at the back near the Patreon shrine because it does look beautiful right now. I'm still not a fan of jades but look at those flowers man. I've also got these cordyline plants which are being obscured by all of this growth here. I might have to remove them and use them in other parts of the landscape because, because they make nice contrast with the rest of the succulents. They are not succulents but they are also drought tolerant which means that they would be great working together with my succulent plants. This is a Xeriscape friendly plant. I don't think it's obvious from that angle but my agavoides are getting ready to bloom. And I think many of my Echeveras as well. This is a bittersweet moment because I want them to flower but at the same time flowering <laughs> attracts all of these mealybugs. So I've been given a lot of advice in the previous videos about this and I thank you, uh, especially Frank. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to follow his advice and use dia diatomaceous earth. And the way Frank explains it, it is a mechanical way to prevent mealybugs from spreading because it gets into, it gets under their shells or something like that. So it's an interesting approach and something that I might want to try. Right now, I haven't really started looking for sources for DE, but I'm pretty sure I'd be able to find some online. In any case, it's currently winter and it would be spring by the time they bloom. So I'm thinking that maybe I should let them and I'm going to use some of those blooms to use for my seed propagation in spring. And I hope I don't kill them this time. Apart from the flowers, lots of my Echeveria are starting to produce pops and even my wife noticed them. I'm going to let them grow a bit more, especially now that's winter. And maybe towards the end of winter, during the early parts of spring, I'm going to sell them off. So if you are in Australia, especially in the non-restricted states, hit me up. You could contact me on the contact form on the website, or maybe drop me an email using the contact email. Just check out my profile. 
and I would prefer if you're in Melbourne because at least you could have a look yourself and you could just pick up from my house. Yeah, play with the truck. <laughs> And this has been Zach's favorite part of the garden. He would play with the truck every day. Well, as long as it's not raining. Play truck. Play truck. Huh. Aside from the Patreon shrine, I also want to work on this area. There's still a lot of gaps. As you can see, for this part, I elected to add more pebbles in between, color around the... <laughs> As you can see, I chose to add a color of white pebbles around the edge of areas in the middle. Because they complement the elegance around it. There's an awfully huge gap here though. And I'm still working on propagating my Sidum blue feather. It will take a while. But I hope that right now, because winter is their growing season. Because winter is their growing season, and I'm hoping that I would be able to grow them a lot more. I'm going to work on a winter propagation video, and I'm going to show you which ones works best right now. So stay tuned. The Aeoniums are absolutely loving this weather. After all, they are winter growers. The sunburst over there has grown quite large since I got it. It has produced lots of offsets. I had to remove a couple in front because it's starting to droop and it's crushing them. But it still has a lot of pops at the back. This stump, it looks like it's a gunner, so I'll have to remove it soon. The head though, doing much better now. It has established itself and is already growing new leaves. The Aeonium Short Black, I'm using them as a filler here. And each cutting that I have, it's, produced, it's now starting to produce its own offsets. So if you want to make cuttings, now is the perfect time. Or at least if you are in the Southern Hemisphere. Here, sit on the rock. So. Now compared to my friends in the Northern Hemisphere, especially those in the higher latitudes, our winters are mild and it's a run compared to yours. We don't get snow here in the lowlands. We do get some snow in the regional areas, especially the, especially the mountainous parts of Victoria. And because of that, we're lucky that we still have some growth. Big rock. Yeah, big rock. And because of that, we're lucky that we still have small, growth. Small rock. Small rock. Small rock. Big rock. Big rock. Small rock. Small rock. Sit the rock. Sit on the rock. Sit the rock. So despite that, despite it being in the middle of winter right now, we're lucky to have some growth. Apart from that, there's one last thing that I have to show you. It's about Echeverias. With Echeverias, during winter, you will see an overall trend of their leaves drooping downwards. And this is despite the fact that I have them exposed to the sun, so they are exposed to enough sunlight. And if you remember, if you look back at my old episodes, especially the, the ones that are in summer, their leaves are mostly upright and cupped as if protecting the center but otherwise between during spring and autumn their leaves are still cupped upwards but it appears like they're trying to funnel much of the rain towards themselves but now that it's winter the leaves are drooping downwards and as if they're trying to funnel away the water from their leaves outwards But at least that's what I think they're trying to do, you know, they're trying to remove, they're trying to move as much of the rain away as they can. 
I'd like to thank my Patreon sponsors, especially Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Gloria Ninotti, Camille Narvaez, Linda, Tom, and everyone else. Thank you so much for your support. I decided to only cover the succulent garden at the back, not the front. I might have a better look at them next time. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you get notified of the next episodes. I'm going to keep this short so I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Zach, say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye camera. Bye camera. <laughs> Bye Siso. Bye Siso. Look at the sky. Bye camera. Light turning. Look at the sky. Nice. What color is the sky? Blue. Blue sky.